Hey guys, it's Martina. So you're considering a battery or you already have one and are wondering what the heck went wrong? Well, in today's video, we will go into what you need to think about when considering a battery, whether that is with a new installation that you're planning to do or with an existing grid tied solar system that you already have. We will cover proper sizing and what to look out for. Now, this thing will be expensive or was expensive, so let's not mess it up. I also like to say, do not half acid, please. Do it right from the get go or set yourself up for future expansion success. There is absolutely no point in investing in a 100 kilowatt hour battery capacity if you only have a 5 kilowatt of solar panels on your roof to charge it. Also, I do want to get something out of the way because I do or I have heard actually quite a few solar reps use this in Facebook solar groups, but clearly batteries know that do not make power. They store it. Now let's get right to it. And of course, first remember to like and to subscribe. That is if you do like this video or not, just do it like Nike said. <laughs> All right, to properly understand how solar and battery system will work together for you, I would like to use the water analogy, my favorite. Think of a solar system as a plumbing system. So you have your water, right? That's your solar production. It's that juice. That water then flows through your supply pipe that is a certain diameter and a certain pressure. This is your solar and battery inverters. Then you have your water storage tank. That is your battery. Now it does not make a lot of sense or a lot of sense, a lot of sense, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> to have a huge tank and a tiny supply or a very powerful supply, but a tiny tank. You need to match the capacities of the two. For example, you may have a system that generates 10 gallons of water per day. You use five gallons during the day and five at night. Well, a battery of about five will be perfect. It'll get you through the night. Now, in contrast, if you have 10 kilowatt hours of production a day, but only three kilowatt hour battery, that storage tank is simply too small to handle your nighttime loads. I really should be a plumber. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, this is also why during a power outage, unless there is a storage present, your solar system will not power your home because that is because the power or that water doesn't have anywhere to go and the system just automatically turns off and it's designed to do that. So before purchasing a battery, you need to determine your goals and assess your power usage and solar panel generation capacity. And remember, getting a battery for power outages and grid protection may look a little bit different than if you focus on simply fighting the net metering policy and self-consumption is your main goal. Keep that in mind when we go over the next few minutes of this video and steps. Step number one. To begin, you have to calculate your power usage extremes. If you have gas heating, your lowest usage will likely be in January or February during winter time. Now that is if you are in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> now analyze your utility bill to determine your average daily kilowatt hours usage. So usage is gonna be kilowatt H. I love using Excel. And you can just input all of your 12 months and set a super simple formula that divides each month by 30. Now, obviously, some months have 31 days, but for simplicity, just do 30. For example, if you use 1200 kilowatt hours in January in that billing period, divide that by 30. In that case, 1200 divided by 30 equals 40 kilowatt hours per day on average. Next, just repeat that process for your peak usage period, which for most people obviously in the USA are typically in July or August. For the sake of this video, let's say you use 1200 or I'm sorry, 2400 kilowatt hours in August. Dividing that by 30 gives you an average of 80 kilowatt hours per day in August. Now that is it. You need 80 kilowatt hours of storage. So let's say six power walls will do. I'm just kidding. There's a little bit more to that. 
So now we need to look at those days and now you have to try to see if you can also view your usage by the hour. So check when during the day was that power used? Was it more during the day with very little at night or are you never home? You work outside and you use all your power basically at night. You have to ask yourself those questions. Now, step number two, how will the solar system affect the battery size? Now you need to assess your solar power production. So if you already have a system in place, this will be rather easy. You can simply just take a look at your daily production graph on your monitoring app on your phone or on the web, and then place it against your usage graph. Again, Excel shall be your best friend, and I really need to create a template for y'all. But then look at that look at that point during the day when you're producing a lot of power obviously usually happens in the middle of the day but you're not consuming all of it and you're basically selling it to the grid how much power are you exporting on a daily basis is the question that you want to ask yourself now here's why sizing of the two has to go hand in hand if you have a small system that does not even meet your house's needs will the battery be useful if not just for power outages i mean if your solar system only offsets your daytime usage you're not exporting anything to the grid the only reason to get a battery is really for power outages unless there is like time of use charges and you can charge your battery during the low cost periods and then use it during the high rate times I guess that's another way to use it now what if you don't have a solar system and a graph to use so for new installations estimate your production using tools like PV watts I'm gonna link all of that in the description for you below. It is absolutely easy to do. All you need to do is input your zip code, assume one kilowatt system facing south or east or west or whatever your roof is facing, estimate it. And I also like to say, try to be as conservative as possible. You would much rather be happy with the outcome than disappointed. Now, that way you can see on the PV watts, you can see your average daily production as well because you're gonna take the monthly production and you're gonna divide it by number of days in the month. And then compare it with your daily usage. So at the end of the day, all you wanna do is compare solar production, solar output with your usage, daytime, nighttime. Now also, please understand that you cannot design the perfect battery. Weather conditions change and one battery cannot be perfectly sized for all types of days. What we're trying to do is do the best we can for most days. And again, I'm gonna also include like a PV Watts quick guide link down in the description below so you can actually see what to do step by step. And finally, step three, determining the capacity. So now let's determine what is the battery size that you really need? So you likely do not need the battery with 80 kilowatt hours of capacity as solar panels will also provide power during the day and the battery will be used primarily at night. Moreover, during extended power outages, you will conserve your battery and limit your overall electricity usage. So what is that sweet spot? So again, you really need to focus on what the true goal is. Is it the daily self-consumption and making sure you do not export too much power to the grid or you'll have to go bigger than a simple one day power outage protection? Just focus on when. When is that power used? This is why looking at multiple days during the year and comparing your usage patterns will be extremely, extremely helpful. Again, our usage will vary throughout the year and we cannot perfectly size the battery to all of those days. We can only do the best that we can. Now also keep in mind that if the battery is there for power outages, that power outages might actually happen during extreme weather events. We just had so many of those in May of 2024 in Dallas, Texas, and lots of people, lots of our customers had week long outages with very, very bad weather throughout the week. Now, that did not allow for their battery to actually fully recharge during the next day on, on a daily basis. Nevertheless, 
a lot of those people were extremely, extremely happy that they had some sort of battery in place. And a lot of people that didn't have a battery reached out. Speaking of, if you are in a DFW area, please reach out for a quote for a battery or a solar system. I'm here to help you. Also, if you're not in DFW, you can reach out to me um, just to get a consultation scheduled to review the quotes that you are getting everywhere else in the world, primarily USA. All right, guys, back to the video. Now, there's another crucial factor that you have to consider, and that is the depth of discharge, DOD. For optimal battery health, it's best not to let lithium ion batteries drop below 20% charge. For lead acid batteries, even though they're not very, very common in home battery systems, the depth of discharge should not go below 50%. Now with lithium, which is the most common, it is okay to go to zero if needed during an emergency, but you do not want to do that on a daily basis. Again, majority of home batteries will be lithium ion, so you should not worry too much about that. However, the most important thing is you have to keep in mind that a 10 kilowatt hour battery capacity should really only provide eight kilowatt hours of useful storage. And a few additional considerations for battery sizing is when sizing your battery, you also have to think of the future energy needs. If you plan to add an electric vehicle or expand your home, factor in the additional power requirements. It is better to have a slightly larger battery capacity than to find yourself needing to upgrade sooner than expected. And lastly, if you want to make sure you're fully prepared, go for a battery system that allows for generator charging. A lot of brands already are implementing that option, such as Solark or EG4, even Franklin has that feature. That way, during an extended outage, just like we just had in Dallas, you can roll that portable generator outside and power the home throughout your whole home system. Lots of homeowners with electric vehicles are also asking and want to be able to use their vehicle to home, the V2H option that are also coming, like with the Fort Lightning or even the Cybertruck. And we're gonna make a video on that very soon, so make sure to subscribe. Now, did you make it that far into the video? Make sure to let me know down in the comments. I'm always very, very curious who stays and who doesn't. Now. How do you prepare for future expansions? That's a very important question, actually. So this part is a little bit trickier, trickier and we really don't have the crystal ball, but we can use is common sense, which I am a huge fan of, <laughs> and some more research into manufacturers. So for those who already have a system in place, such as microinverter system, your best option will be adding an AC coupled battery, such as Franklin WH or Enphase battery. But if you do have a string inverter now, you have a few more options. So you can either do an AC coupled system, such as the Franklin, or even EP Cube can be AC coupled by Canadian, or you can replace your existing string inverter for a hybrid inverter such as Solark or even Powerwall 3. Now, unfortunately, that is not the case with Solar Edge, and that is another video I am about to make in the upcoming weeks. So again, make sure to subscribe. Now, I do think that if you plan on doing solar only first, but you do want to add batteries in the next few years, it'll be much easier and you will have more options when you go with a simple string inverter rather than microinverters. So in conclusion, sizing a battery backup system involves balancing numerous factors, including your power usage, solar panel production, depth of discharge, and future energy needs, lifespan of the batteries, and system efficiency. There's way too many things you have to focus on. Hopefully you're talking to a good installer who can explain all of that to you. Now, be careful considering each of these aspects and using calculation methods outlined above, you can determine the optimal battery capacity for your specific situation. Remember, investing time and proper planning and sizing will ensure that your battery backup system meets your expectations and provides reliable and effective power for years to come. And you know what would really, really charge my batteries? For you guys to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.